When it comes to human biology, handedness refers to someone's preference for using one hand over the other, which we call the dominant hand. This hand is usually stronger, faster, or more skilled, while the non-dominant hand is often weaker, or less precise, or simply less favored. Most people, about 90%, are right-handed. Handedness is often identified by which hand a person writes with, though it's not unusual for people to favor a particular hand for specific tasks. While true ambidexterity, where both hands are equally preferred, does exist, it's extremely rare. Interestingly, in some cultures, using your left hand can even be seen as disrespectful. In the animal kingdom, some non-human primates also show hand preferences, but they don't exhibit the strong right-hand bias that humans do. There, Preferences are more evenly split between right and left. Scientists still don't know exactly when humans developed a right-handed preference, but evidence suggests that Neanderthals, our close relatives, already leaned toward being right-handed like us. However, attempts to figure out handedness in early humans by studying ancient tools have proven unreliable. Historically, left-handedness hasn't always been viewed kindly. For much of human history, left-handed people were considered unusual and, in some cases, faced outright prejudice. In fact, the word sinister comes from the Latin word for left or left hand, reflecting these negative associations. But not all cultures were critical of lefties. For instance, the Inca of South America believed left-handed. People possess special spiritual powers, and among the North American Zuni people, being left-handed was considered good luck. So, why do we end up being right-handed or left-handed? Well, a lot of it comes down to how our brains are wired. The tendency to favor one side, known as lateralization, usually starts in the brain. Different tasks are controlled by activity in specific hemispheres of the brain. For example, the left hemisphere handles certain functions while the right hemisphere takes care of others. Here's where it gets a little tricky. The body and brain are connected in a crisscross pattern. That means the left side of the brain actually controls the right side of the body, and the right hemisphere controls the left side. So when you use your right hand, it's your brain's left hemisphere that's calling the shots. Some researchers believe this division of brain tasks is ancient, dating back about half a billion years. The idea is that it might have evolved because it's more efficient for the two hemispheres to handle different tasks simultaneously. For example, the left side of the brain might specialize in routine actions like searching for food while the right side stays alert for unexpected dangers, say, a predator suddenly appearing. We can see this pattern in certain animals like fish, toads, and birds, which often rely on their right eye, and thus their left brain hemisphere, when attacking prey. This evolutionary setup might have influenced our hominin ancestors, who started walking upright, freeing up their hands for new activities like making tools. As a result, it's possible they began using their hands differently over time. Scientists have tried to pinpoint when this shift to a right-handed preference occurred. One way they've done this is by recreating ancient stone tools, chipping away at rocks using either their left or right hands. Then, they compare these tools with those made by early humans. These studies suggest that over two million years ago, there wasn't strong evidence of right-handedness among toolmakers. However, by about 1.5 million years ago, tools made in Kubifora, Kenya, by Homo habilis and Homo erectus, start showing signs of a growing right-handed bias. Fast forward to around 600,000 years ago with the emergence of Homo heidelbergensis, and we see a clear preference for using the right hand in prehistoric societies. One clue comes from their teeth, where patterns suggest food was typically brought to the mouth using the right hand, indicating this preference had become widespread. Some researchers believe handedness might be tied to language. The theory goes like this. Most people are right-handed. And as we've learned, that's controlled by the left hemisphere of the brain. Interestingly, the left hemisphere is also where most of our language processing happens. In fact, the link between the left brain and language is even stronger than the one between the left brain and right-handedness. This has led to what's called the homo loquens hypothesis, 
It suggests that as humans evolve to walk upright, lateralization, the brain's division of tasks between hemispheres, developed. Later on, as language evolved, the preference for the right hand may have strengthened as a kind of byproduct of the brain's left hemisphere becoming specialized for speech and communication. Another explanation could lie in our genes. Handedness appears to have a complex inheritance pattern, meaning it's influenced by genetics, but in a way that isn't straightforward. For example, if both parents are left-handed, there's about a 26% chance that their child will also be left-handed. A large twin study from 2006, which looked at over 25,000 families, estimated that handedness has a heritability rate of roughly 24%. Scientists have proposed two single-gene theories to explain how handedness is inherited, but research into genetic links and genome-wide studies shows that it's not that simple. It's now clear that no single gene is responsible for handedness. Instead, it's likely influenced by many genes working together, along with environmental factors. Another interesting idea is the fighting hypothesis, which ties the prevalence of right-handedness to an advantage in combat throughout much of human history. The reasoning revolves around the position of the heart and the weapons humans typically used in close combat, such as wooden spears. Since about three quarters of the heart sits on the left side of the chest, this area is particularly vulnerable to a fatal blow. When fighting with stabbing weapons, the hand holding the weapon plays a critical role in how the chest is positioned toward an opponent. If someone fights with their left hand, it naturally exposes the left side of the chest and, by extension, the heart toward their enemy. On the other hand, using the right hand for combat rotates the chest slightly in a way that protects the heart, reducing the chance of a lethal injury. Additionally, the left arm would remain free, making it useful for deflecting attacks or shielding the body. Altogether, this could have made right-handed fighters more likely to survive in battle, potentially leading to a larger number of right-handed individuals over time.